the rift between Saints Row and Grand Theft Auto has never been wider. As if to emphasize these differences, Saints Row the Third isn't afraid to guzzle down the virtual Mountain Dew, Fago, Four Loco, or whatever beverage is the rage these days, and go nuts. The game attempts to obliterate taste, like a shock jock itching to get fired during a raiding sweep. Should you tune in, or drop out? I must still have some purpose on this planet. <laughs> Some asshole is in my pool. The Third Street Saints are sitting on top of the world, with lucrative licensing deals, major motion pictures, and a very active finger in the crime pie in the city of Stillwater. Since there's little conflict in being number one, a shadowy syndicate moves in and kicks the Saints down the social, economic, and criminal ladder. That's the gist, and it follows an outline not unlike earlier games in the series, getting exponentially more absurd by way of hulking clones, Belgian bankers, and rival gangs that are also populated by walking stereotypes. The story doesn't pretend to aspire toward realism, with humor trumping structure, lessening the effectiveness of plot curveballs. This is a rescue, right? <laughs> this ain't some elaborate setup for a gangbang. BSDM clubs that give way to auto-tuned pimps in pony suits set the level of narrative and trots on out from there. Offensive jokes, flashes of skin, and pretty much anything crude and rude run the show. Its cheap jokes get cheap laughs, and while there's nothing wrong with Saints Row not taking itself seriously, the game is also constantly stroking its own ego, combining pride and profanity, resulting in an obnoxious bit of mediocrity. Well, shit. <laughs> Choice is by far the biggest draw on the mean streets of Stillwater. Character creation gives you the tools to customize your thug, abomination, or something in between, with plenty of opportunity to switch stuff around after you've jumped into the game as well. Following a few set-piece tutorials involving airborne bank vault hijackings and skydiving shootouts, the city opens up. Through a mobile phone interface, you can plod the plot forward with diverse story missions, or take on activities, buy upgrades, and check out your territory. Through money and respect, the stand-in for experience, you'll gain abilities and be able to buy real estate that secures safe houses, discounts, and an hourly income. There's also a lot to do between the obligatory shootouts and high-speed chases, from running insurance scams, busing prostitutes to safety, toppling the city with tanks, playing a murder-themed Japanese game show, or even jacking into Tron-inspired VR bike sprints. These activities usually debut as story missions before opening up as optional undertakings, so you'll get a taste of a lot of what the game has to offer, even if you stick to the Saints' critical path. Managing your criminal empire lets you mod your cars, arm your army, and make it easier to bring down rival gangs. Repeat this process and you grow stronger and cultivate wealth. This empire building aspect is subtly rewarding as your bank account swells and the RICO charges mount. Since the unstructured and unscrewed sandbox city offers the most fun, amassing a menagerie of upgraded guns and kitted vehicles for joyriding is the ultimate reward. Buggy behavior actually makes the nonchalant shooting sprees that much more entertaining and fit with the game's nonsensical nature. It's chaos theory at its finest. When a saint flaps his gat in the Brixton borough, a hurricane of bedlam will ensue. The craziness is compounded by adding a co-op partner to ride shotgun, take on missions, and revive you in a pinch. You'll need to use an online pass for this feature, with the only other multiplayer option this time around being the abhorrently spelled Horde Mode. The lightning-paced theme waves are blessed with the germ of a good idea, but they end up relying on gags more than gripping gameplay to get by. Nothing to it. <laughs> to get us all jail time. What? I don't want to be some dude's bitch. Running a gang will keep you plenty busy, but who knew it would be so much work? Even with skydiving garnish, the meat and potatoes of Saints Row is still shooting and driving. The gun game continues the series' brave, foolish march of not including a cover system. It remedies this by balancing your generous survivability with legions of stupid enemies. You make your own fun by switching out guns with an awkward selection tool, sending homies to do your dirty work, and throwing in some wrestling moves and cojones chops. Rollerblading techno samurai, bullet sponge giants, and laser sighted snipers add variety, though the formula never strays far from a hyperactive variation of shooting fish in a barrel. The lure of just relieving stress by spreading destruction is best felt by cutting loose in the city, though the keys to the fun kingdom are tied to progressing through the story. Kinsey, why am I a toilet? Driving is also finicky at times, with cars sliding around on a plastic pavement and air transit feeling like it takes place in a void. Good driving is rewarded with near misses and oncoming traffic stunts racking up respect bonuses, which just draws more attention to the stiff steering. It's nowhere near as exasperating as the moronic gunplay, though it will induce a grimace from time to time. Huge kudos to the GPS system, which integrates upcoming turns into the game world. 
I wonder why my foot's not up your ass at this point. You want some clothes, man? No time. There's a lot of titillating action on screen, and like the porno cred it tries to evoke, it isn't all that pretty in HD. The hustling and bustling Stillwater always seems to be on the verge of combustion, with the city streaming in as quickly as it can, and denizens not quite sure how to navigate it. Volition's zeal for the zany deflects some scrutiny, as does the excellent voice work, with multiple personalities for the player character, and a satisfying music selection that does justice to the absurdity at hand in a variety of ways. No one likes it when you shoot a panel and it's unethical. Saint's name used to mean something more than body spray and some ass-tasting energy drink. The question of quality versus quantity is a constant tug of war in games, and the Saints make it their cardinal dichotomy. Shining novelties fueled by base guffaws quickly devolve into gimmicks. No one is expecting war and peace to play out in the streets of Stillwater. What you should reasonably expect, and what Saints Row the Third fails to deliver, is a clever Mad Magazine parody, something more than a middle school mentality expressed with a high budget. What you get is a sandbox game that's fun for a spell, but one that you'll outgrow pretty fast. You fucking Philistine. What you know about art?